I am um, I'm really honored to be here today and particularly would like to thank ACSS for inviting me uh, uh, back here again. Um, a couple of months ago, we had uh, a very good um, a session during the e e Emerging Senior Leaders uh, <laughs> Seminar, where some participants were able to come to the AU Observer Mission uh, for uh, a couple of days. And I was, you know, extremely, as you can imagine, happy to see almost 50% <laughs> gender part balance. Uh, in the room, and I'm hoping that moving forward we'll also be able, yeah. able to do that. Um, I'm also particularly honored to share um, uh, this panel uh, with my dear brother, Brigadier General Mohammed. Uh, you have the honor of having two Mohammeds on the table <laughs> today. Um, so this morning, uh, my intervention will focus generally on an overview of the current situation on the continent. I know that throughout the whole week you've been you know, going through uh, the details, but I'll just do a general overview to kind of refresh uh, some of the discussions. Um, and then f zoom in a little bit on um, some of our efforts at the African Union level, um, highlight some of the strengths and the challenges, and then conclude with some recommendations moving forward, which I hope hopefully will uh, stimulate some, some discussion. And hopefully I will learn uh, from all of you who are actually uh, practitioners on the ground. Um, so as you're aware, terrorism uh, as a whole remains a senior, serious threat uh, to us on the continent and particularly for our stability and development. And in this recent period, we've also witnessed some of the deadliest uh, terrorist attacks on the continent, which has impacted us um, nearly, I would say, globally um, uh, all over, uh, West, East, uh, Central and North in particular. Um, and the impact has been devastating um, across the continent. There have been thousands of uh, deaths, uh, displacements, um, people's, people whose livelihoods um, uh, have been affected. I personally am from the northeast part of uh, Nigeria, and I've seen firsthand um, how this has impacted uh, my people and uh, what my state has become over uh, the last uh, decade. Um, Generally speaking, uh, uh, we think of terrorism as being primarily driven by um, a local agenda, but we also know that um, a lot of these groups draw inspiration from um, more international uh, groups that exist beyond the borders of our countries or our, or our sub-regions or even um, our continent. Um, examples such as uh, I came uh, with local groups that have merged with local groups in the Sahel um, and also um, uh, offshoots of uh, ISIS or returnees um, that have uh, collaborated with ISIS, particularly in uh, uh, Northern Africa and the Sahel. Um, another important aspect of transnational threat of terrorism lies in its growing links with uh, crime, of course, uh, organized crime. And in Africa, many situations testify to the increasing direct linkages and the collusion between terrorism and transnational organized crime, particularly in situations where state institutions are weak and the lack of um, uh, capacity, of course, uh, affects uh, the discharge of constitutional mandates. Another issue of concern also relates to the use of um, uh, modern technology, and particularly um, the internet by terrorist groups to recruit, uh, to radicalize, uh, and even to train. And unfortunately, many of our youth uh, tend to be uh, the target uh, of these groups. And this includes, of course, online dissemination uh, on the know-how of guerrilla fighting methods and uh, making IEDs. Um, but of course, just uh, rac radicalization, um, targeting vulnerable, vulnerable minds. <clears throat> so with that uh, global uh, introduction, uh, I'd like to zoom in a little bit more onto some of the efforts um, at the regional level. Um, generally speaking, our efforts uh, on the continent uh, in combating terrorism have a long history, um, starting from uh, the re resolution on 
the strengthening of cooperation and coordination among African states, uh, which the Union had pledged to fight the phenomena of um, extremism and terrorism. Um, uh, well, I, 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 would, I would actually step back to say it started in 1992, I would say, and then eventually to 2002 with the adoption of um, our AU plan of action on the prevention and combating uh, of terrorism, which eventually uh, led to the establishment in 2004 of the Africa Center for the Study and Research on Terrorism, ASSERT, which is based in, um, in Algiers. Um, ASSERT, as you're aware, serves as a structure for uh, centralizing information, studies, and analysis on terrorism and terrorist groups and uh, the development of uh, counterterrorism capacity and building programs and supporting our member states. The African Union has also remained actively engaged in the search of solutions aimed at addressing uh, this scourge, which includes steps towards mobilizing member states towards the full and effective uh, implementation of some of uh, the AU normative um, counterterrorism, the, the AU counterterrorism uh, framework. Uh, and over the years, we've had some commendable efforts, uh, both at the national and uh, regional level. Of course, our countries and <coughs> some of the subregions are not um, at the same level. Um, in addition, um, the African Union peace support operations and ad hoc security coalitions have also significantly degraded the capabilities of some of the terrorist groups in the different subregions. Uh, at the national level, um, the criminal justice response to terrorism uh, have also been strengthened with the adoption of the anti-terrorism legislation and the enhanced capacities of law enforcement agencies. There are also growing efforts um, by our member states to better understand and address the political, social, and economic situation and conditions um, uh, that make it conducive uh, for the spread of violent ideologies. And several of our member states have also developed integrated tools and programs to deal with returning foreign fighters and disengaging combatants, uh, which include prosecution, rehabilitation, and reconciliation. Um, the African Union institutions have also continued to build capabilities of intelligence service, uh, services, uh, law enforcement agencies, and other institutions to prevent, to prevent and combat terrorism uh, in line with our instruments and frameworks. Um, in addition to ASSERT, which I uh, mentioned earlier, um, we also have the Committee of Intelligence and Security Services of Africa, CISA, uh, and most recently, the African Union Mechanism for Police um, Cooperation, AFRIPOL. Uh, furthermore, um, we have uh, the Nouakchott and Djibouti processes for enhancing security cooperation in the Sahel and East Africa regions. Um, maybe you'll be saying something a little more about that, Brigadier. Um, but this was established under the auspices of the AU and has served as a cat catalyst for cooperation between the intelligence services of countries in the respective regions. And the processes have also allowed different institutions to develop shared understanding of the common security threats and also devise collaborative response measures to address them. The forums have also served as confidence building measures uh, among intelligence uh, services. And now to the challenges, I'm aware of the time. <laughs> so what are some of the challenges? Um, um, as far as our continental efforts are concerned, we must recognize that uh, we've made um, some progress. But of course, many challenges still remain. Um, First of all, I would say the efforts also, uh, you know, despite the efforts, um, remain quite fragmented. Um, many times very military oriented and um, are incommensurate, if you like, with the, uh, with the scale of the, of the threat. Um, this, I would say, um, more along the lines of, you know, the thinking that military efforts or excessive force um, is not the only approach that should be used towards countering <coughs> terrorism, especially knowing uh, the root causes um, or understanding the root causes. And so significant gaps do persist uh, at all levels. 
Um, and of course, we have the challenge of the continued political instability and absence of law and order in different um, regions, which have provided an ideal environment for terrorist groups to grow and to operate. Um, in addition, there are significant gaps in both national and regional efforts to counter uh, terrorist financing, uh, particularly due to the poor functioning and financial intelligence units and other regulatory frameworks, uh, as well as poor border management capacities to prevent and interdict um, or intercept uh, illicit trafficking. Um, so all in all, while uh, we recognize that we've made some critical gains, um, particularly with ongoing military operations, uh, efforts to consolidate and sustain the gains have uh, lagged behind, and we must recognize these. Um, these include inadequate, of course, humanitarian responses. Um, many times um, these uh, are poorly financed. Uh, we also have um, challenges of um, resources, when, resources when it comes to early recovery initiatives and of course the slow pace of uh, restoration of law and order. So what is the way forward? Um, I've tried to come up with some broad um, recommendations, but I'd also like to hear from you um, ideas on how you, you think, um, <laughs> given um, some of the gaps and the challenges um, that I've highlighted, uh, we can uh, better address this issue. The first is that uh, we need uh, to have a, an integrated and comprehensive approach. Um, we need to focus more on prevention and address the conditions that are con conducive for the spread of terrorism. And we need to look at more integrated security, particularly with law enforcement responses, and uh, think also about sustainable post-conflict stabilization and reconstruction. Secondly, uh, I think there's a need for strong political will and effective action at the national level, especially. Um, it's widely acknowledged that shortcomings in preventing and combating terrorism and violent extremism on the continent is not necessarily due to shortage of guiding principles and frameworks. Um, it's more an absence of, of course, implementation, but also strong political will. Um, in order to affect the kind of action, um, particularly at the national level. And in this regard, I think there are no alternatives to nationally owned, uh, led, and financed efforts to achieve mean meaningful action uh, on the ground. Of course, collaboration is, is key. Um, thirdly, uh, I would say that there's a need for strengthening of regional and sub-regional approaches. Um, uh, we need to, as I said earlier, strengthen cooperation, but we also need to take into consideration the particular context of the respective uh, uh, states, uh, which enshrines, of course, human rights um, principles. Um, fourthly and lastly, before I conclude, um, I, I would argue that addressing the underlying socioeconomic issues including respect for human rights and ensuring good governance is critical. Uh, we need a comprehensive approach to countering transnational threats and terrorism and violent extremism, which include strenuous measures and steps in socioeconomic development throughout the continent and in order to stem out uh, some of the underlying conditions that fuel the scourge of terrorism if we do not address the socioeconomic gaps and challenges. Um, I don't think we'll be able to um, address this, this issue and get rid of it once and for all. So to conclude, um, I would just like to, as a representative of the AU, reiterate uh, the AU's commitment to fully shoulder its share of responsibility in the fight against terrorism and violent e extremism. Of course, the Commission continues to assist its member states to develop harmonized uh, rule of law based approaches to address the threat posed um, by both domestic and foreign uh, terrorist fighters and the, and the returnees, which is important to mention. 
the Commission will also um, expedite the process for establishing the African list of persons, groups, and entities involved in uh, terrorist acts, which was outlined in uh, the 2002 action plan, which I had uh, mentioned earlier. And um, lastly, we should be mindful of the fact that the responsibility all in all uh, lies on all of us and that we need to act collectively to confront this scourge, which not only undermines international peace and security, but also the very values and principles that have long characterized our diverse and democratic societies. I thank you for your attention.